Math 10 students, how are we today? We are on part two of our financial mathematics, and today I'm going to ask you to turn in your books to page 14 and 15. And what I'd like you to do is read over the example two on page 14 and 15, and then give, a t uh, give yourself a try on the your turn section on the bottom of page 15. I'm going to go over that right now with you. Uh, you may want to try it yourself just to see if you know what you're doing. Uh, so I'm going to read it to you. The Butcher Block sells beef tenderloin for $28.90 per kilogram. The Meat Mart sells beef tenderloin for $3.25 for 100 kilograms. Or sorry, 100 grams. That's important. Which store offers the lowest unit price? So another way of thinking of unit price, we did that in the previous uh, chapter. That was one of our definitions. And it means the price for one unit of an item. In this case, I, just think of it. If you Basically what they're asking is if you bought the same amount at this beef butcher or whatever it's called a meat mark where is it cheaper right what has the lowest unit price so prefer that so i wrote down our basic information so at the butcher block 28.90 per kilogram let's note those units there and at the meat mark 325 per 100 grams now i'm sure you remember this but if not we know that one kilogram has 1000 grams in it okay that's important so when you look at the example um, in the book, the example two, they show you the two different ways you can compare. You can either go price per 100 grams, or I could go my price per kilograms. Either way, I'm just going to pick one and show it, but you could do it either way. Uh, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to see which has the lower unit price. Let's take this one, the 325 per 100 grams. Okay. Now, if I want to change the 100 grams to kilograms, okay, we know that like we said, one kilogram is a thousand grams. So how many 100 kilogram or 100 grams are in a thousand grams? So a thousand divided by hundred is 10, right? I would need 10 of these to make up one kilogram. So what I'm gonna do then is multiply this by 10. Okay, so I took my 325 by 10, because again, that's gonna get me up to one kilogram of the meat here. And I got $32.50 per kilogram. So let's compare that. The, the beef butcher, it's $28.90 per kilogram, and at the meat mark, $32.50 per kilogram. So which is the lower unit price? Of course it is, okay, the lower unit price is at, what's it called? The butcher block. I'll say the butcher block, and that price was, 28.90 per kilogram. Again, uh, I'm not going to go through it, but if I wanted to change this into 100 grams, we know as well that 100 or one kilogram has a thousand grams. And I guess another thing that we could say is that we know that also equals 10, 10 groups of 100 grams, doesn't it? Okay. So what I would do instead here is I would divide that by 10, right? And I would have got $2.89 if you did it that way. Okay, and you'd see that again. $2.89 is also lower than the $3.25 for 100 grams. So yeah, either way will work. Okay, so that's our answer for A. All right, if we go on to B, it says the butcher block changes its price for beef tenderloin to $34 per kilogram. All right, calculate the increase in price. Okay, so I'm just gonna erase this. All right, so it was 28.90, okay? And it increases price, it says, uh, up to $34. So what is the increase in price? We're just gonna subtract those, aren't we? 34, subtract 28.90, okay? You can use your calculator and get that answer or your mental math and you'll get $5.10. So the price increase, uh, for the butcher block is five dollars and ten cents. All right, if we want to go on to C, it says what is the percent increase in price? Round your answer to the nearest percent. Okay, so we're going to do our percent increase. So from that last one, we just found out that the increase, okay, was five dollars and ten cents. Okay, and what was the amount that it was before? It was twenty dollars and ninety cents. 
So we're trying to find out what percent of the total that you started with, okay, this is the increase, is this. So what percent is that increase? So on your calculator, you would take that and you would say 5, 10 divided by 28 uh, decimal 9, 0. Okay, so do that on your calculator. And then you will get, you'll get this, 0 decimal 1, 7, 6, okay? Now, it's asking for percent, uh, so to do that, we're going to need to multiply this by 100, okay? The reason we do this, and we've talked about this before in class, okay, if you're doing it, right, if you're trying to find what percent is out of 100, um, you, would, you would take this, and you're trying to solve for x, so you divide it by 100, so you multiply by 100. Anyway, once you kind of do this a bunch of times, you just know you need to multiply that by 100. But this is why you can look at that, because you're trying to solve for what is this amount if it was out of 100. Okay, so then you would just move the decimal two places, right, when we're multiplying by 100. And you would get 17.6%, and I believe they said to round to the nearest, what did they say, percent, okay? So we would round that off to 18%, okay? So it's an 18% increase in the price pretty steep, isn't it? All right, so that's your answer for C. Now let's go on to D. D says, the butcher block changes its sign on its beef tenderloin as shown. Give one reason for this change. So you can see the new sign in your book. You know, it says beef tenderloin, whatever. And now it says 340 per 100 grams. All right, so before they used to have it advertised like this, 28.90 per kilogram. Uh, and now they said the price has gone up, right? It's gone up to 34, is that what it is? Yeah, up to 34. So quite a big jump really, isn't it? And like we said, 18%, that's a, that's a really big jump. So why do you think they might've changed the sign to say this rather than that? A couple reasons. I think it probably doesn't look as expensive when you see it per 100 grams, right? If you were a frequent shopper and you always saw 28.90 per kilogram, and then all of a sudden you saw this per gram, maybe you wouldn't even notice. Maybe you'd just be like, oh, they're just putting the price up differently, whatever. You might not take the time to do that quick mental math. That's why this course is so useful, so you can save your money, right? So you might not even notice something like, oh, they just, whatever, 340, 100 grams, okay, it doesn't sound so bad. Even if you were comparing to, let's say, the store down the street, you're like, oh, just a little bit more, whereas before it was a better price, right? Um, and they, yeah, it doesn't look as expensive, and I think they hope people may not even notice. All right, so that was the answer for D. So what I want you to do today, uh, for some homework, is go to the next page, flip over, okay? Now, all these answers are in the back, so it's great. I want you to make sure you're checking your answers. Uh, let's do, I want you to do on page... 16, why don't you give number three and four a go on your own, and then I do want you to pass in number eight, okay? So please show your work to get full marks, okay? Show your work, as always, you know that. And one thing I'm going to note, it says in part E, okay, part E of that says, Find out the tax of sales of good where you live. What would the total price with tax to carpet dining room? La la. Um, the back of the book says Nova Scotia is 10% HST. That's not true. Um, so our HST okay, is actually 15%. So if you went and you wanted to buy a carpet at your local store, you would be charged actually 15% tax. And fun fact, um, that is a combination of the federal uh, sales tax and the provincial. So federal is 5% and provincial is 10 for a total of 15% HST. It's the harmonized um, sales tax. So it's 15%. So please use that number when you're doing E, okay? If you have any questions, please reach out. Let me know. I'm happy to do a Zoom call with anyone. And uh, that's all for today. Thank you.